Welcome. Today we're going to do one more example of integration using uh, spherical coordinates. Okay, so the example is going to be actually uh, number 25 in the book. Okay, and so uh, um, remind, let's remind ourselves again. What we're going to do is uh, compute a volume, a volume, and it's going to be of the form like this, where we have some volume region C times dV. And the idea here is that when f, the function that we're integrating, is just 1, uh, the, this will just be the total volume, and I'll call that capital V. So again, let's define what this volume is. So problem 25, the volume is going to be defined by these enclosing surfaces. Uh, and the enclosing surfaces are, one, the cone with uh, phi equals pi over 3. Okay. And then the second one will be the... Um, uh, will be the sphere uh, defined by z is equal to 4 times cosine phi. Alright, so in this case, let's look at both of these independently first. So for 1, we're going to have some sort of, here's our Cartesian coordinates. So phi equals pi over 3, we'll be having an angle going to about right there, goes out, and now with this, you notice right here that theta then is free to vary. So we can spin this around the z-axis all the way around, as long as we're always holding to pi over 3 angle, and then there'll be another cone at the other side. Um, Actually, no, you don't get a cone out of the other side, never mind. The idea here is that phi is only pi over 3, so it just creates this cone, this, this cone here. All right, so the, the second, uh, the second uh, shape is going to be the sphere, and let's see why this is a sphere. Okay, so um, again, th the same thing here, theta is free to vary, uh, and z, I'm going to draw, I'm going to do it kind of an approximate doing it approximately first. So there's our z-axis, there's our um, y-axis, and there's our x-axis. We see when we put theta, when we put, uh, sorry, phi is equal to zero, that's going to be up there. Uh, that, that, makes, that makes cosine zero is equal to one, and that means that z is equal to four. So, and, and phi is equal to zero means that we're actually on the z-axis, so it's going to be four there. That's going to be the very top of this sphere. I'll show you why it's a sphere. And then when, when theta, when, when phi is going to be equal to pi over two, that's all the way down on the, um, uh, 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 the, uh, um, uh, this axis here. And we can see that that corresponds to z is equal to that corresponds to z is equal to zero, just as we'd hope. And then down, if we take all the way, uh, phi all the way to pi, then you get down to negative four, right? So it's gonna create this nice shape like this. I didn't really draw that very well. So it's gonna kinda go like that. And now, again, theta is free to vary. So that means we can go around, we can spin this around the z-axis like this and create a sphere. All right, so let's get a, a little bit better uh, uh, justification for why it's a sphere, why this defines a sphere. And we're actually going to go back to our, our polar coordinate, uh, our, our spherical coordinate definition. So we know that rho, uh, rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. All right, so we have the z right there, so let's plug that in. That's going to be uh, 16 cosine phi squared, and then we got to remember what x and y were. So x, of course, is going to be rho sine phi cosine theta. So that means it's going to be 
rho squared, sine squared phi, cosine squared theta, and then that's also going to be plus, and then y is going to be rho sine phi sine theta, so that will be rho squared sine squared phi uh, sine squared theta. Okay, so now let's put this all together, combine like terms. We can see that there is a uh, rho squared sine squared phi, so we can factor that out. And we're left with a cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And by the Pythagorean, that's one. All right, so then uh, what we have here is, if I write this further, phi squared, or sorry, rho squared is equal to 16 cosine squared phi plus phi squared sine squared phi. All right, so now I'm gonna find all the phi's. We wanna solve for phi here. Uh, so phi squared is equal to one minus sine squared phi is equal to 16 cosine squared phi. All right. So this right there is actually equal to cosine squared phi. So um, we have rho squared cosine squared phi is equal to 16 cosine squared phi. Those will cancel, which implies that rho is equal to four. So there are no other constraints on phi or theta Rho equals four means that we're talking about a sphere uh, with, so this is gonna be of radius four. All right, so let's put these two shapes together. So uh, the, the, the surface then, the enclosing surface will be a cone with like this. So the total surface is gonna be a cone coming off of the z-axis. And then, uh, the top part of the sphere coming in like that. So it's gonna look a little like an ice cream cone, I guess. So where do they meet? Well, we can see that if z is equal to four cosine uh, phi, we know that the cone is at phi equals pi over three, so I'm gonna put that pi over three in there, and z is going to be equal to four times cosine pi over three. Cosine of pi over three is actually one half, so it's going to be z is equal to 2. So here it's at 4. It comes in and that's 2 right there. So that's where they meet. All right. And so all the rays coming up to the surface there, they're all going to be rho equals 4. All right. And they're going to vary all the way down till uh, phi is equal to, or sorry, uh, yeah, phi is equal to pi over 3. So now I'll get out a new sheet of paper. I'm going to draw that again. So z goes up. We have our, uh, our phi is equal to pi over 3. And it goes all the way up to there. It comes all the way down like that. So really what you think of this is like a little cone that we've taken out of a, of a, of a much bigger uh, sphere. It's this little piece of cone that goes and meets at the origin. Right? So that's the idea. And each one of these rays coming out to the surface is all uh, phi equals four. So what we want to do is actually define. So our volume is going to be this abstract integral. And it's going to be the volume defined by what I'll, I'll call it capital C, dV. All right, so uh, we have to define what our C is. C, so we have to think of this in terms of what the volume. So we know that rho is going to vary from zero all the way up to uh, um, four, so we know that our set is going to be phi, or sorry, rho phi theta is equal to, and now phi is gonna vary from zero to four, sorry, rho is gonna vary from zero to four, and then phi is gonna vary from, remember, all the way from the z-axis all the way down to pi over, or pi over three, And then finally, there, uh, 
for every point that, that emanates from the, from the z-axis, we can spin it all the way around. We have to get all of those, so that's going to be, theta is completely free to vary, and it goes all the way around the whole circle, so 2 pi. So that's the set that we, we've defined, and these give our nice limits of integration for our volume. So V is going to, we're going to set this up now in terms of an iterated integral, so we're going to go 0 to 2 pi. 0 to pi over 3, 0 to 4, and then our function of case, of course, is just 1 again. And then what do we pick for, so now remember dv, we're going to put that in terms of spherical coordinates, so it's going to be rho squared sine phi d uh, rho, and then our second integral is going to be in terms of phi, and finally d theta. All right, again, this factor here is only with rho, that factor only has a phi, and there's no factor with theta, so we can break this into a product of three single dimensional integrals. Um, like that. Sorry, that's a two, d rho. Okay, so let's compute this through. That becomes two pi. This becomes negative cosine, and we're going to evaluate at the limits, zero to pi over three. And then finally, we have rho will be uh, rho to the third power over three. All right, so that becomes a two pi over, sorry, we have to evaluate the limits from zero to four. So that'll be two pi over three times, uh, so we're gonna plug the four in there, we get a four to the third power. And then finally this one becomes uh, one minus one half. So uh, th that of course is just a one half. So that'll cancel with, with that. So we get a one third pi four to the third power. So let, let's pause here. So I said this is a piece of a circle, like a little cone carved out as if you were to take a, a, like a, a paring knife out of an apple and, and like literally excise out this little cone of, of, the, of, of the apple from the sphere, and then you're gonna pull that out. And so it's worth noting, uh, so what is the volume of a circle? Or a ball? I should say a ball. And that's going to be, it's of course, 4 thirds pi r uh, cubed. In this case, our r is gonna be equal to our rho, which is gonna be equal to f 4. So that is 4 thirds pi to the 4 cubed. All right, so we have one third. So we want to say, so this is going to be our V. So I'd like to just get a fraction here. So V is going to be equal, so V over V ball. So this is part of the ball and this is the whole ball. Whole ball. And that's going to be one third pi over four to the th third power over four thirds pi four to the third power. Let's cancel. And we're left with um, the threes cancel. We're left with one fourth. So this little cone here is going to be one fourth of an entire ball. So there you go. Thank you very much.